it comes to live action fairy tales, why should Disney have all the fun? You're watching Beyond the Trailer's review of Warner Brothers Pan. from bedtime stories. Thanks to decades of Disney animation, the Mouse House is the trusted brand when it comes to fairy tales. Yet the fairy tales themselves are actually in the public domain. The only thing that Disney owns the rights to are the elements that they added to their animated and now live action adaptations. And as Warner Brothers tries to build their own superhero division like Disney's Marvel, they're also trying to launch their own live-action fairy tale division. Pan is hitting theaters first, followed by Tarzan and King Arthur in 2016 and Jungle Book Origins in 2017. Now ideally, Pan, which is actually co-produced by Greg Berlanti, who oversees Warner Brothers' popular DC Comics TV shows, would set the stage for all these upcoming films, but, well, Pan has had a rough time of it. When the picture first came together with Hugh Jackman as the mysterious pirate Blackbeard and Hannah director Joe Wright at the helm, it seemed like a very strong contender indeed. Although, casting Garrett Hedlund, whose promised stardom is yet to materialize as the young Hook, was somewhat worrisome. But when Rooney Mara was cast as the Native American princess Tiger Lily, it shook the picture to its core. Audiences and the media went into a frenzy, and Warner Brothers has tried to repeatedly defend Mara's casting by saying they went with the best actress for the role, regardless of skin color. Also, it's worth noting that Mara has a very similar look to Keira Knightley, who was director Wright's leading lady in Pride and Prejudice, Atonement, and Anna Karenina. Sometimes directors just favor a certain look when it comes to their leading ladies. Although, to be fair, Wright is married to a woman of Indian descent, and one has to wonder how she felt about his Tiger Lily casting. Anyway, while for decades Hollywood has gotten away with whitewashing films, the recent implosion of Fox's exodus has got to have Warner Brothers worried. And their confidence in Pan does seem shaken, as while it was originally said to be a big summer release, Warner Brothers blinked and moved the pick to October when none other than Disney scheduled Ant-Man to open opposite the picture. Now, it does have an entire weekend to itself, but Sony's Goosebumps is debuting the very next weekend. And as for adult moviegoers, not only is award season starting up, but the very genre-y Crimson Peak, almost a gothic fairy tale itself, also opens the very next weekend. But still, at least publicly, Warner Brothers says they're eager to make a pan sequel, and soon, before newcomer Levi Miller gets too big for the role. Uh-oh! Too late! So much for, I won't grow up, damn child actors and their hormones. Maybe that's why Disney animated these fairy tales in the first place, huh? So I'm sure that there are actually a number of people who are culpable for this absolute mess. But I'm going to pin it all on Greg Berlanti because he is zero for two when it comes to movies. And the stink coming off of Pan is eerily reminiscent. I'm getting a serious case of deja vu to the stink that came off of his first movie that he ever produced, also for Warner Brothers, and that is Green Lantern. Oh boy, I tried so hard to like this movie, but at the end of the day, it's just a waste of really good production design. I mean, the production design on this movie is Disney level good, right? I mean, this is actually, a, I looked it up after I saw the movie because I was so incredibly impressed. And it's a French production designer, I have her name here, named Aline Bonetto. And she did Amelie, who doesn't remember the production design on that movie, but thankfully it was paired with a decent script and uh, other elements. Uh, we'll get to the specifics of Pan in just a moment. But she also worked on Mic Max, which uh, I'm sure you might recall the trailer for that at least. It didn't become quite as big here in the US as Amelie. Uh, and then also the Yves Saint Laurent movie, which is uh, currently making the rounds. And that has a very impressive trailer. I haven't seen that one either. But boy, her production design single-handedly held up this whole colossal mess. However, while Aline Bonetto did a great job uh, pulling off eclectic mess, the movie itself does not. It is just a plain old mess. Now, that's not to say there aren't some good elements here, and particularly 
uh, the cast. Uh, just two members of the cast, actually. Half of the cast is great. Half of the cast is absolutely abysmal. So the good members are Hugh Jackman, who is certainly game. I think uh, he really wanted to try and do something special here and just was not provided with the opportunity, but he tried his darndest. Also, the only time I laughed out loud during the movie is when he had Pirate Purell. At least I imagined it was Pirate Purell. I thought it was hilarious. Uh, and of course, uh, pirates get awfully dirty. So whatever can cleanse their hands must be some pretty powerful stuff. But you can imagine what the what his performance must be like if that's my big takeaway. Then of course, Levi Miller, who I think just perfectly embodies or embodied Peter Pan. I mean, fantastic casting and a great actor. I think he did a really nice job. But uh, as we saw in the open, he is growing like a weed. But I don't necessarily know if that would preclude him from revisiting this character for a sequel because he could maybe become teen heartthrob Pan, right? Maybe? He's in a weird space where he seems too old to be like just kid Pan, but he still seems a little bit young for like uh, you know, the kind of twilighty romance that maybe you could bring to this. You know, the whole Wendy, Peter Pan, Tinkerbell love triangle, right? What team are you on? Uh, I'm not sure what team I would be on. I guess, I guess I'll be team Tinkerbell. Wendy's a little bit of a wet blanket. But anyway, that, that was the, the best uh, elements of the film. The production design and Hugh Jackman and Levi Miller. Otherwise, you know, I just really couldn't understand uh, why they were changing so many things about Pan, right? Like when the trailers came out, I was like, this seems unnecessary to me, but I'm going to trust that you'll be able to, you know, convince me when I watch the movie. But the movie didn't convince me. It just seemed like a lot of change for the sake of change. To a classic, by the way, and a classic that does feature an origin story for Peter Pan, which they just totally flushed down the toilet, which seems particularly blasphemous considering the, what they replaced it with is so subpar. Now, at the very end of the movie, it gets a little bit good because Peter Pan, like Peter Pan, as you know, we all know him, finally shows up. And that was pretty cool. I did like that quite a bit. Uh, and it, but it also made me angry at the same time because I was like, I could have been watching this for like two hours, but instead you made me watch that horrible, convoluted, unnecessarily complicated origin story uh, when I could have had two hours of awesome, you know, pixie flying, pixie dust Peter Pan. I thought that, that was really, um, you know, really a shame. I think that they uh, should have just made that movie right away. You know, sometimes you don't need an origin story. Sometimes an origin story just drags things out unnecessarily, again, as I said. Uh, now, also, as for the rest of the cast, I said the other half was abysmal. Uh, so that, of course, includes Garrett Hedlund, who I really just did not enjoy. Not only because I didn't think his performance was very good, but because I didn't understand the point of his character, especially when Hugh Jackman was standing right next to him playing a perfectly serviceable Captain Hook. I was like, well, that looks a lot like Captain Hook. I don't know what your, I mean, your name might be Captain Hook, but that guy's, act, Hugh Jackman's actually playing Captain Hook, so I don't know why there are two of you. And they never really, uh, you know, gave a good reason for creating this crazy backstory where Pan and Hook used to be friends. You're, you know, you were just like, why'd you put a middleman in there? Also, I've seen some people say that Garrett Hedlund was playing Indiana Jones, but I didn't get that. I felt he was trying to do Johnny Depp. And I have to say, we make fun of Johnny Depp and we tease him and we say he like overacts and gets paycheck gigs these days. But I think Garrett Hedlund makes it crystal clear that it's pretty darn difficult to do what Johnny Depp does and we shouldn't take him for granted because this cheap, uh, this cheap Johnny Depp was not working. And then of course, Rooney Mara. You know, I already talked about the whitewashing in the open, which of course is just so disappointing on its own. But I mentioned that the excuse Warner Brothers made was because they just wanted to get the right actress for the role, right? Regardless of skin color. Well, regardless of skin color, Rooney Mara was just really boring in this in this role. I mean, if this was the best actress of the role, they didn't look very hard. I think she just did a really poor job. Uh, she was not at all compelling. And I also felt that the girl power elements with both uh, Tiger Lily and uh, Peter's mom, Amanda Seyfried, were just really shoehorned into the movie. Like, they were not necessary. It's like, Peter Pan is not a girl power story. It's a Peter Pan story. Then the other thing that I want to mention is that this movie has a tremendous amount of death in it. Like, a lot of people get killed, including children. But nobody in my theater cared. Uh, they didn't care about much when they were watching this movie because the movie didn't make us care about anybody and they didn't really show any consequences. And we all knew where it was headed. We were like, yeah, 
I know he's going to fly. That's Peter Pan. We all know where this is headed. So that was another thing that really sucked a lot of the life out of the movie because, you know, you, you know the destination and they made the journey not very good. So the only reason that I'll actually see this movie, the only reason is if you're a fan of really great visuals like production design, if you appreciate that, then maybe you should go as a matinee for like half price. Also, if you're going to go, you have to see it in 3D. The 3D is very well done. It's actually, you know, really brings the production design right to you, to life. Uh, and I think it's very well utilized. There's a lot of 3D-ness in the movie. And, and also, um, the flying pirate ships are pretty darn neat. And they look particularly good in 3D flying over the skies of London. That was really nice. That's when I still had some hope for the movie. I was like, it's really pretty. And then it just became too, too dumb for me to continue a conversation with. So that's my review of Pan. I'm very curious to hear what you thought of it if you, if you decided to go and see it. Uh, and what do you think of Warner Brothers' uh, future when it comes to live action fairy tales if this is their opening salvo? And Greg Berlanti! How do you feel about that Booster Gold Blue Beetle movie that he wants to make, considering his horrible track record? Should maybe just, you know, stay away from it and let someone else do it? Like, not even produce it. He's horrible. He's like, he's really, really bad. All right, but his TV shows, I'm sure, are wonderful. All right, so thank you so much for tuning in, and you can check out some other episodes right now.